This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Christy Wright. I'm a business coach, author, and speaker, and I'm joined today by one of my good friends, number one best-selling author and host of The Ken Coleman Show, Ken Coleman himself. Hey, what is happening, Christy? Is, hey, it's Friday. It's which, Friday. Which is fun. I love hosting on Fridays. Do I you? just I just feel a little extra feisty and oh. excited about the weekend. Okay. So this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun show today. I wanna warn everybody, when you've got some extra feisty, that means it's gonna be really, <laughs> really good. So if you've been wanting to get a question answered by Christy, today's the day. We got some extra feist. You just never know. Okay. You never like know what's it. what's gonna happen on this show. Listen, triple eight eight two five five two two five. Ken and I are here for you. We are taking your calls, answering your questions. Of course, we're always taking your money questions. Ken is an expert on career and purpose. Let's take those calls. You got a call. You didn't get into his show, calling in his show. Call us here. We'll answer it live on air. As for me, I love helping you with business. Y'all know I love all things business, side business, small business. I have my book, Business Boutique, so we can always take your business calls. But I'm, I'm currently in a theme of talking about a different topic, which is right here. balance. Right here. Here it is. Take back your time. The guy's down in the control room. Look at that. Look at that. That baby is hot. So hot, I should have put some gloves on. <laughs> it's available for pre-sale. Take back your time. The guilt-free guide to life balance. And if anybody understands this, it's you. I mean, uh, you I are wrote a brand new personality. <laughs> You've got three kids, uh, a husband who's a very successful professional. I mean, you got a lot of plates spinning. So why'd you write this? You know, I wrote the book I needed, Ken. Is this what we all do? <laughs> always works. <laughs> but it's so funny you say that because this book, I wrote this book um, over a year ago, you know, with the whole process and stuff. But I feel like I'm in a season where I'm living this out, living out my own principles yeah. in a whole new life. Level because I don't I think you know this but I started seminary a few I, weeks yeah, ago. I did know that. So just add that. Very impressed. Add that to the schedule in terms of managing your yeah. time. But here's what's interesting: I think that whether or not you have little kids, older kids, no kids, male or female, working outside the home, inside the home, we all have this sense that things aren't right. Yeah. That we're failing. That we don't have enough time. Yeah. That we're out of balance. And so when I started going down this path, because I've been talking about this for over a decade speaking at at companies and stuff on this topic. I wanted to talk about it in a new way. I wanted to get beneath the surface of the calendar Mm. and the schedule and the time management apps and productivity tips and talk about why we feel that way in the first place. And let's solve it there so that we can fix the root cause. And then, oh, by the way, that will fix our calendar. So as Ken said, take back your time. The guilt-free guide to life balance is available for pre-sale. When you get your copy in pre-sale, you get the ebook free, the audiobook free, a ticket to my event in September free, and uh, and a bunch of goodies. So get your pre-order copy and it will be mailed to you yeah. September so, 14th. Let's take some of those calls yeah. too. You know, obviously everything we mentioned and Christy and I, both of us love to, we love to tag team the calls, not just on the money stuff, but also, hey, I, I think I've got this. I want to do this. How do I best go about it? What's next for me? What's, What's my next, next step? So we're going to co- uncover the emotional as well as the practical around living on purpose, whether it's starting that side hustle or making the change or some of you, you're killing it and you just feel like, the water is rising and Christy can help there. So we really want to open it up because we know there's so many of you out there who are getting after it. And uh, this topic, this book um, is, is so relevant. So, hey, don't be afraid to call in. Uh, Christy, you know, we do this on the Ken Coleman show a lot and I want to mention it. Some of you are, are hurting today and you need to talk to Christy on this particular topic or us on finances or, or, or work, getting that bigger show, whatever it is. And because it's the second largest show in the world on radio, you're feeling like, I don't know. Well, we'll change your name, Mm. change your location. Okay. Kelly will do that. Sure. Because we want you to call in and feel like you can be vulnerable and safe with Christy and I. Yeah. But we'll change your name. We'll change your location. If you got a sticky situation, you have that safety. So I just want to mention that. For sure. No, that's good. 888-825-5225. Ken, I actually have a question for you as we we kick off this show together today. And I think this is going to be fun because... 
I often get questions about um, where do I find my business idea? I want to start a business. I want to do something next. And I know you get similar calls, maybe not specific to business, but what's my next step? Mm. How do I know? I've got this itch. Let's put it that way. I've got this itch to do something. I'm feeling um, stagnant. There's nowhere really for me to grow in my company. What's next for me? I'm curious when you get these calls, how you advise people, because I know you get them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different options for that next path. So let's just start there as we kind of kick this off. And maybe we'll get some calls about about career and side business and what the next step is. So when somebody calls in and says, I've got an itch, I know that there are some ideas behind the itch. But a lot of times people will call and they'll present and say, I really don't have any idea. And I've gotten to the point point now approaching 5,000 callers where I know that's not true. So the first thing I'm going to say is that's not true. You have an idea. I know you do. Like the very, the very fact that you go, I know I'm not supposed to do this means that your brain and your heart at some point have connected and there's something that you're thinking of thinking about. And so I want to dive into that and we begin to say, okay, what's behind the itch. And so there's an idea. It may not be a well flushed out idea. It may just be, I kind of want to work with blank. And when we can begin to get there, now we want to dive deeper. And Christy, you know my methodology that helps people with clarity and then the confidence to step out. And that is, okay, let's look at this idea. Do What talent would you need? What skills, hard skills, soft skills would you need to be able to pull this off? So they'll tell me and then we'll walk through it. Okay, great. Because talent, folks, that's the tools. I mean, that's your tool belt. So you look at your hard skills, soft skills. So soft skills, people skills, hard skills, something that you're you're physically doing or uh, mentally doing. It's a skill. Think of those as the tools you'll use to do the work that you love. Now you've got to say, okay, do you, what do you love about this idea? What, What about that idea? What work involved, task, function, role? is connected to this idea and they begin to identify actual work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe for somebody who wants to uh, be a teacher, they go, I love communicating. I love connecting and I love instructing and helping people with the light bulb and in the conference to do something with the light bulb, whatever it is. Okay. So then we identify the work itself. I love this idea of the work or I love the work. I've done this work before and I love it. And then the third piece, Christy is missional result. So all work creates results. So, what results do you want to put into the world? What, what contribution do you want to make with your work? That's mission. So talent is what I do best. Passion is what I love to do most. And mission are the results that I want to produce. When those three indicators get in alignment, your professional purpose statement is essentially filled out. I use what I do best to do work I love to produce results that matter to me. So whether that is an entrepreneurial venture or a career path worker for somebody else, that's how you get clear. And as you know, clarity leads to confidence and confidence leads to courage. And that's how you step out. It's so, so good. It's so stuff. good. It's, and it's so practical too, because people need these steps because there's people listening right now that have an idea. And I love that you dig it out of me and say, no, you have it. What is it? Yeah, that's confirmation. That's right. That's it. It's good. It's good. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts.
Christy Wright. Sitting in with me today is Ken Coleman, my good friend and Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, host of The Ken Coleman Show, which is available every weekday on Sirius XM, your local radio station, and wherever you listen to podcasts. We are here for you. We're taking your calls, 888 825 Of course, we are always ready to answer your money questions, whether that's questions about what to pay off next, how to get out of debt quicker. You know, something that we really love to talk about is how to help you earn extra money yes. to pay off that debt. Maybe you need a bigger shovel. You're in baby step two and you're like, gosh, I, I feel like I'm never going to get out of debt. Well, I love that. We can talk about Side businesses, part-time jobs, getting your income up. Getting promoted. Hello. Getting promoted. And I got to tell you, you, you're the queen. Your business boutique program, your coaching program, I mean, if, you, if you've always had this idea of a side hustle and you feel like you got to go work a second or third job to get out of debt or maybe to fund uh, getting qualified to move up and you're going, I don't know, give Christy a call. I promise you. It's not as complex or scary as you think. So, you know, many times working for yourself, Christy, is a better option than going to work for somebody else in a second or third job. Uh, let's just talk about a specific example real quick, and then we've got some calls coming in, so I want to go to the phones. Uh, let me tell you, Ken, my mom built this cute little ice cream truck stand thing. Okay, she built <laughs> tiny houses for fun in her retirement. It's a whole thing. I realize that's I not normal s- people. Really? It's adorable and hilarious. I mean, is she selling them? No, she, no. This is just for herself. Just for fun. She donates the tiny houses to the homeless. Like it's that she's is she's killer. Not, she's amazing. I knew she could bake. I didn't yep. know she could build. I I nor did you I. You didn't either. Nor did I. So you like go over to her house and like you hear a power saw in the backyard. And you yes. walk around. And you're like mom. Yes. And she's got a tool belt on. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So she builds, are you ready for this? She builds this ice cream truck on a trailer that she brings over to my house. And we set up a little ice cream stand in the neighborhood that Carter's going to run. Because Carter's dream when he grows up is to be an ice cream How man. How awesome okay? is that? So, so I think, I picture this Saturday, I put it out on Facebook in our neighborhood. And I said, hey, we're going to do a little ice cream stand. Yeah. You know, so cute. Sure. I'm picturing that I'm going to sit in a, a lawn chair. My son's going to make $2. This is a great business lesson. And we're all done. Right? Like it was a fun activity. Sure, sure. Ken Coleman. Oh, no. He made $200 in like two hours. <laughs> he doesn't even know what $200 is. No. That's phenomenal. No, but I thought, what are you... Was he doing the scooping and everything? Well, it, it was like it was like ice cream sandwiches. We got to keep oh. it simple for a six-year-old. You know yeah, what I, mean? I was, I was going to say, but, that's impressive. But the, but the point is... Yeah. The money you can make when you start a he's side six. business or small business... He's six he made years old. $200. <laughs> In two hours, you said? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and I'll bet yes. people are like, uh, when is Carter going to be back? Uh, I get asked every time I walk through the neighborhood, yeah. when is the Carter's ice so, cream truck coming So if you back? and Matt sat down and said, okay, well, let's see. Let's come up with a schedule what's, what's, for what's our What's our plan for the ice cream truck? <laughs> uh, he has no concept of, of what, what you, this even means. Does he have a name? It's Carter's ice cream truck. It's real creative. But listen, the point is, the point is you can make a lot of money when you do your own thing. The without sky question. is the limit, without especially question. if you're trying to get out of debt. Yes, you can take I a part-time that. job. You also could have an ice cream truck and be getting out of debt. Me thinks a lot Carter's quicker. ice cream uh, ice cream truck ought to show up at Ramsey Solutions <gasps> next Friday and he'll make two grand. We would not even have the inventory for that. <laughs> that's that's so true. All right, let's go to the phones. We've got Cynthia in Mobile, Alabama. Hey, Hey, Cynthia, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good. How can Ken and I help? Well, first of all, thank you guys for the show, and thank you guys for coming to work to, <laughs> to do this line of business today. So yes, I have ma'am. a few questions that sort of piggyback on each other. First of all, to you, well, to Ken, uh, you gave me some advice about six months ago. I hesitated, hesitated, hesitated. Finally, just pulled the trigger. I let the day job go. You uh, did. So that was... The grandest thing, so I brought awesome. back my time. Thank okay. God. Yes. Good. So what yeah, are you doing? I feel so good about that. <laughs> so fill us in. What did you, you quit the day job to do what? Well, I had a other thing going that I've been doing for the last 20 years or plus that I absolutely love, and that's been a notary signing agent, which goes out to, you know, person's home to close these real estate deals. And the market is absolutely phenomenal. I, I can't even buy time to do out of work, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely love that. But I'm just trying to be realistic and think, okay, so what can I pick it back off this? So, if everything's not selling, then what's going to be the backdrop, the opposite of this to study now to launch myself when sales sort of dissipate and 
go the other direction, I guess the rental market would go up. And so I'm just trying to think what along that line can I do to uh, be prepared? Yeah. So you're saying what's next for you? Yes, definitely. Well, I have an idea that I want to do. I think it would be so phenomenal to work with uh, Mama Bear and do these wheel kits, but people don't want to address the issue. And <laughs> they don't want to talk about the subject, and I just figured I can cater it to where I come to your door, we sit and have a call, uh, talk, you tell me what you want, I put it in paper, we get some sample wheels, we write it all down. If you want to do a follow-up meeting with the family, then there you go with your presentation. Well, and trying to figure out the pricing of that and sure. other Cynthia, things so, on that line. Cynthia, why wouldn't you try that other than the fact that you're so busy in real estate right now, you, you'd have to carve out some intentional time, but uh, Christy knows how to help you do that. Why wouldn't you try that? Because you have no pressure right now. I've done a few of them, but... Uh, I even ask all of my family members, okay, I do you guys for free just so I can get some leverage under my belt, you know, some expertise, but <laughs> nobody's a go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about it. <laughs> no, they don't. And I said, wouldn't it be better for you to put plans in place, you know? Okay, so uh, I, I mean, I've done a few obituaries for family members, you know, just out of courtesy, but I think it's just so important to have the wheel kit in place, you know? Sure. Well, we talk about that a lot of times on the show. I mean, it's such a gift to your family members that you're leaving behind. Here's an idea, yeah. Cynthia. I'm just going to throw this out there. So when we sell our... Um, graduate survival guide, our, our teen products, we're not really selling it to the teenager, right? We're selling it to the uncle that wants that teenager to not go into credit card debt, to live, you know, Dave's principles and so on. So you're, who you're selling mm -hmm. to is not the recipient. I wonder if you don't reach out to the younger generation, the adult children of the people that actually need the will, you know, that, that you're talking about, because there's a more of an incentive for them to have their parents do it. Like I have any time that someone has mm. passed away, whether it's someone uh, that I know in our community or even, um, you know, extended family, I go to my mom and I'm like, where's your stuff? Where's your stuff? What do you want? I know this is hard to talk about, but I'm your only child. I want to honor your wishes. This is not fun for me or you, but where's your right. stuff? So, so I am highly motivated for my mother to have this put together because I want to okay. honor her. And so I wonder if you're not, if you stop marketing to the people that don't want to talk about it, rightly so, okay. and you instead reach their children, their adult children that have some skin in the game, have a little bit more incentive for their, to honor their parents. Is that something you okay. you might want to try? I, I love that angle. I love that angle. You yeah. know, I, I, okay. Cynthia, I'd add one thing. I think Chrissy's absolutely right. But I also think that you might want to adjust your approach. Instead of wanting to sit down and talk about someone's impending death, why don't you <laughs> focus on the actual pain points around the will kit? Do you understand what I'm saying? And Mama Bear's done the hard work for you. And they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing. And I would lead with the pain point. And what I mean by that is, is it's almost in the form of a question. And if you can do that via email, social media, uh, maybe a text and just a quick mention to somebody and leave them, leave them hanging with it. Make them lose some sleep at night over, hey, if you were to die tomorrow, would your estate be in good hands? Would it be easy for your family? Whatever those pain points are, and Mama Bear lays those out for you. But instead of, hey, can I come sit down and talk about your death and what we need to do? I, I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying you're putting it that way, but it, it's all about pain points. And it's all about just leave it with somebody. And, and I would begin to kind of... Uh, pepper that in, maybe even on social media and your network there, and begin to just confront people with maybe a one sentence question uh, and let people wrestle with it. Let them come to you. Uh, that would be a thought. And, and, and just keep trying. That's what business is, Cynthia. You know this from real estate. Yeah, don't right? quit. You don't sell the very first house to the very first person. You just keep trying. Try different language, try different branding, try different approaches, different pain points, different people. Just keep trying. You got this. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey folks, I got a great option to help you pay for your education. The Army National Guard. The Army National Guard believes you are the next greatest generation because you have proven that even in adversity, that you have what it takes to succeed. That's why they offer benefits like tuition assistance, career training, and a paycheck to help you avoid debt. No matter what your goals are, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. Saving and investing is smart, but there's one key to winning with money that is often forgotten. That's protecting your family from emergencies. There are 10 kinds of insurance coverage you might need based on your life stage, and we've built a tool to show you what coverage you need to add, drop, or adjust, and it only takes five minutes. We'll even rank your to-do list by importance and email it to you so you can get your plan in place fast. It's called the coverage checkup, and it could be the most important five minutes you spend today. Donald H. wrote in, and I like how he put it, for anyone who has not completed this checkup, do it now. You never know when something will happen, and you never want to leave your family in a bad situation. We were just talking about that. Get out your phone and text CHECKUP to 33789. That's check up to 33789. Don't let an emergency sneak up on you. Protect your family now. Ken Coleman and I are taking your calls, 888-825-5225, and we are talking about money always here on the Ramsey Show. But Ken and I also love to help you figure out what your purpose is. Is that a promotion? Is it a job change, a new company, a new position? Is it a side business or small business or growing your business? Maybe it's something else. And of course, because we're celebrating my new book, Take Back Your Time, being on pre-sale, we are always talking about how to manage your time. And the correlation between managing your time and managing your money is pretty pretty consistent. No question. It's, it's amazing how you need time to make money and how that affects your ability to do one or the other. So give us a call, 888 825 and we're going to go to Brian in Flint, Michigan. Hey, Brian, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Great. How can Ken and I help today? Well, I'm kind of in a predicament here. Um, I'm a diesel mechanic by trade. Um Sorry, I'm a little nervous, but... Uh, That's okay. Take the, your time. <laughs> what I got going on is I'm kind of in a toxic work environment. Um, I've got a job offer on the plate, and it's more per hour, but we're trying to get out of debt. We, if if I did my numbers right, we'll be out by March, we, staying with my current job. Um, I work 60 hours a week, if not more. So there's no no real home life in, in all that. This new job is no overtime, a straight 40 hours, but only $2 an hour more. Mm. And the insurance is more expensive. Benefits package isn't 100% there. But my, like I said, my current job, it's... A lot of overtime, a lot of, you know. Uh, yeah, Brian, let me ask you this. It. Brian, so I'm assuming you called us and you've run these numbers. And what I mean by numbers is, have you run the numbers on, okay, you got a $2 an hour bump, but it's back to 40 hours. How does that compare with the 60 hours you're putting in now uh, with your current rate and then the cost of the uh, the benefits going up and everything? So have you run the side-by-side between current job and new offer? Have you done and that? If if I keep up the overtime and all of that, it's about almost thirty thousand a year less to take the new job. Yeah, but and that's, that's where my that's where my predicament is. It's like, well, if I stay at this track, I'm looking at March. We're looking at March to be out of debt. Well, but but you also have to take into consideration, Brian, that you're freeing up twenty hours in your week that you could go take another part time job, do something else that brings you joy, gets you out of this toxic environment, 
and you're still able to up your income a little bit to maybe still stay on track. Okay. That's yeah. a possibility. I, I'm, I'm not you know what I mean? Like Which that's way, an option on the table. When you called us, you gave us an either or. Which way were you leaning before the call started? You know, I've, I've been leaning both ways. It's like, do I stick it out just to make sure, you know, make us stick on our plan? Brian, I, I've Brian, been Brian, the, Brian, I want to know. I know you've been going both ways, but you were leaning one direction. I just know it. Which way were you leaning before you called us? Partially sticking with my my job currently. Yeah, and the reason is is because you know what you've got there. You're working sixty hours. You keep this up, and you can you can gut it out. You can keep it going. Oh, it's yeah. not fun, but March is going to be here before you know it. So my question is, let's go to the future, okay? Because I I think this is almost a false choice for you. It's less about dropping back to forty hours a week, okay? And it's more about what's the future look like. So let's fast forward to March. You're out of debt, okay? And you've been working so hard. And let's say that you backed off the overtime. What would you be wanting to do long term? Do you want to stay as a diesel mechanic or would you want to uh, move into something else? Or do we stay as a diesel mechanic where we are or diesel mechanic somewhere else? I mean, what's that look like? Uh, it's always been my passion to be a, a diesel mechanic. Great. Um, so are, are you thinking you're going to drop back on the hours after we get out of debt in March? I would hope. I would hope to. Well, wait a second. What do, you mean, to, what do you mean you hope to? Do you not have a choice right now? I, I do have the choice to, to drop it back or, or continue pounding it, pounding out the hours. Well, but you're saying there's no home life. What, what, who, who's on the other end of that, and what do they feel about you staying at 60 hours a week after we get out of debt? Uh, I got a wife and, and daughter, and they wife would like to see me home a lot more. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, speaking as the resident husband on the panel, I would do that. I would be gazelle intense. I think she's probably on board with the 60 hours for the reasons, but but I would then, you know, start to drop back and maybe, you know, kind of wean yourself off of the 60 hours because you want to get to baby step three and that emergency fund as well. But I would do that. So I, I, I got to tell you, I wouldn't take the new job based on what you're telling me. Christy, you see anything else there? You got anything else on that? On No, I will say, though, I, I always I don't like situations where I feel painted in a corner with two bad options. Bad option here is I'm taking a $30,000 pay cut. Bad option here is I'm staying in a toxic work environment. I just encourage you um, to look at other options. So, Brian, you can stick this out. March will be here before you know it. This is not a, if you were saying this is three years from now, we'd be like, OK, right. let's assess a different path to get there. You stay on this path and be like hey we're just bu- gonna buckle down for this season until march we got our eye on the prize we're so close to the finish line you can do it and you will do it but it's not a bad thing if you want to explore what it would look like to fill those other 20 hours so you're not home anymore but you may be happier you may be earning income in those 20 hours that's an option on the table but i think i think ken's right you're the clo- the low-hanging fruit the quickest win is to stick with what you've got, what you know, has good benefits, has the income you need, and then in March you reevaluate what yeah. you want to do, evaluate your pay, evaluate your schedule, evaluate everything because you're debt free and you've got a, a, some more margin and flexibility there that you've worked so hard for. Yeah, and I and I, I would lean into the toxic part. I think that's right. I think I'm I'm hearing toxic thrown around a lot. Uh, I get it, but. Uh, but that is a very good point, and and I, and I do think that if it truly is toxic, then diesel mechanics are always going to be needed, uh, whether it's diesel specific or just your mechanical abilities are so transferable. So in that situation, Brian, now we're looking for a different different opportunity. So you would be doing what I call doing the right thing in the wrong place. If it truly is a toxic environment, I believe that uh, there's definitely some difficulties there. But you're just looking for a different place where whatever's going on in that workplace is not happening as much. So I, I, I'd sit tight and then let's look to move on after we get out of baby step two. We appreciate the trust and, and appreciate the call. And that really is a tough situation where you're gazelle intense and, and you're going, good grief, this is exhausting. You it, know? Is, it is. And I it's think that's, that's the other thing too, where it's like you can buckle down for a season and we all have to do that at times um but maybe there's maybe there's another path there if not then you buckle down for that season and when march comes you open up your options 
For anyone listening right now, if you are feeling so busy and you don't know why, you're feeling out of balance, you're feeling like I'm exhausted all the time and I have no idea how I got myself in this place, text BUSY to 33789 and take my life balance quiz to get to the root of why you feel that way and what to do about it. That's BUSY to 33789. This is The Ramsey Show. right sitting in with me today is ken coleman and we're taking your calls about life and money 888-825-5225 and we are going to go to augusta with kendall hey kendall how are you doing wonderful how are you guys doing good how can ken and i help awesome i was just calling to you um ask a question um i'm a travel nurse and i've been working like a madman trying to pay down my debt Currently paid off about thirty grand in awesome. about four months. Awesome. Um, and I just paid off my car. I did a stupid thing, as your dad would say, with my car, and I had it continued <laughs> along. But hey, he's not my dad, Kendall. <laughs> it's a real thing. Everybody thinks he is. I just feel like I need to clarify, <laughs> really, for America, that Dave Ramsey is not my dad. Can we just have a moment? Yeah, he's not. I, I'm, oh, I'm flattered. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> Ken, everyone thinks he's my dad. I get this on social media all the time. Kendall, continue. Just want to clarify. He has a daughter, Rachel Cruz, who's a personality. He has a daughter, Denise Whittemore, who works for the Ramsey Family Foundation. I'm a Ramsey personality, not his daughter. Now we can go on. Kendall, let me, let's have it. You got, you paid off your car. I just felt like we needed to clarify that for America. (laughs) Sorry. So I paid off the car um, and the car still showed his value fairly well. Of course, it's going to depreciate. So the car now is probably worth between 13 and 14 grand. Um, And I'm turning away and probably by the end of December, just of my own, it's just working the way I am. I'll be able to knock out the rest of the credit card debt that I have, uh, as well as a personal loan. There's probably about ten grand left on that. I'll be able to take care of both of those by December. Well, me just trying to be, you know, overzealous. Should I sell my car that's paid for and use that thirteen grand to further knock down my debt and just buy a little cash car um, to just to get around with? And I'm just a travel nurse anyway, so a vehicle that I get is going to have a ton of miles put on it. Um, it, it just needs something to get me to where I'm going for as my next assignment is concerned. Or should I just stay on track, keep working like I am, pay off the debt, um, just using my job and my income, which I'm making pretty good money at this point, and just keep my car and don't worry about it? That one. That one, Kendall. Because listen, you need your car. It's incredibly important to the work that you do. And you're so close. I totally hear in your voice, you're just excited and you want to fast track this. And we get people calling in all the time that have that gazelle intensity, which is awesome. But then they're finding ways to try to get around the plan. Like, oh, I'm going to take out my retirement to try to pay off the debt faster. No, no, no. Let's just stick to the plan. You got this. This is a marathon, not a sprint. I want you to pace yourself. You're doing great on the plan that you're on. You're being super aggressive already. You're going to have it paid off really soon. And oh, by the way, you need that car. And so even if you sold the car and then had to buy a new car, there's there's a cost in the headache and even financial of the of going through that process. And I just honestly, I just don't even want you to have to deal with it. So keep the car, keep the car, stay on the plan and you will be debt free before you know it. But I love your enthusiasm. I think that's awesome. Uh, I think you're just excited, but just stick with the plan. You got this. All right. We're going to go to Ellen in Chicago. Hey, Ellen, how are you? Doing good. How Doing can good. can I help? What you got going on? Well, I have uh, a chronic medical condition. Okay. And um, last year I spent a huge amount of time in the hospital. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this year I spent. Um, I've had two hospitalizations. Luckily, I've not been in the hospital for three months. So okay. Um, 
very grateful for that. Yeah. However, I'm looking to the future. Eventually, this is going to force me to retire early slash go on disability, I'm sure. Okay. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to go on disability. So I'm looking. I, I closed a side hustle I had that was just leaking money right and left. And I had no idea on the finances and stuff, and I closed it. Um. The temptation is going back to doing the same thing, which was selling on eBay and Etsy. I will not sell on Amazon again, ever again, as a third-party seller. Um, but other things I could think about is, you know, you know, obviously the financial coaching through you guys. Or, But what I really want to do, and it's a very, very tiny niche market, is I am a hand spinner, which means I make my own yarn. I'm also a somewhat of an expert in different breeds of sheep, and there's a possibility there is uh, basically you know festivals throughout the United States and guilds that would hire people to give presentations, okay. and I'm that's really the thing that I would love to do. That was a, kind of the first thing I wanted to do um, back in the back and. I, you know, there's there's a push for me to go, you got to have something that's going to bring in a reasonable amount of money. And um, and, and there's a fear factor of, uh, you know, imposter syndrome yeah. going on with this. How much money? And it's so ten- How much money do you need to bring in if you're not going to be on disability? If I'm not going to be on disability, I would need to probably bring in at least uh, Thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, and I'm guessing this hand spinning uh, craft show thing will not bring that in. No, right? No. Okay, so I'm not opposed to you um, pursuing that on the side, kind of for fun, almost like a hobby and bonus money, where it's like when those shows come up, and if you can get books to do that, but that's the bonus money. That's not the primary plan because it can't support you financially. And the last thing you need when you already have everything that you're dealing with, with your health, Ellen, the last thing you need is a financial burden of having a business that does not bring in the money that you need to live on. Because just like Ken and I were talking about earlier, business can support you. You can choose a business outlet. You can choose an industry. You can choose a path that can bring in not just good money. You can choose one that brings in great money. And so I want you to figure out what that is and do that as your main thing. It doesn't have to be going back to eBay. It could be something completely different. You already know how to start something. So that's a, that's a great step in the process, but it needs to be something that can support you. I got a question, Ellen. Question for you. Uh, Real quick. I'm going somewhere. I don't know if it's going to lead anywhere. What, what talent or skills do you have that makes you a good yarn spinner. For, forgive my ignorance. This is true ignorance. But are you, is it sewing? Is it, uh, help me out. What is that? Okay. I am a teacher. Okay. My current position, Ken, is I am the IT help desk, uh, service desk agent. Okay. I am best on the phone, walking people through either doing troubleshooting, which I'm very good at, or Um, teaching them how to use Outlook or Excel or what they need to do for requesting certain type of information. Okay, let me ask you Um, now. So uh, you don't have to share what the chronic, but what it is, if you're comfortable, tell us. But I'm I'm asking to say, how will that affect your ability to be on the phone with people or via Zoom and walk them, guide them, instruct them through some type of technology process? How will it affect that? Um... If, if, if I'm, ex- okay, it, it, if I'm on the phones, I'm, I'm good. Okay. My, 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 I have heart, fa- I have chronic, um, just a heart failure. Okay. Gotcha. And which also have a few, uh, you know, some yeah. other core, you know, other stuff yeah. that goes along with gotcha. it. Gotcha. All right. Let me ask you and, this because our time is limited. We got about a minute. So I'm going to, I'm going to move okay. really quick. Okay. Okay. So. Your specialty is is guiding and teaching in the technology field, yes? My specialty is guiding and teaching in anything. anything. I used to teach at a community college. Okay, so here's what I want you to do, Ellen. Here's the homework assignment. Uh, I agree with what Christy said as the hobby, but because your heart failure and any of that, that's not going to 
preclude you from teaching and guiding people on the phone and with the internet. And I'm telling you, with the movement that we've seen post-pandemic to online teaching, because you were a community college professor, I would look into online teaching. My wife has got a dear friend from our time in Atlanta, and she went from high school teacher to full-time online teaching adults and continuing education. It is an exploding industry. I want you to look into where you can teach and what you can teach online and do that from home, anywhere you got a computer. I think that's a good direction for you. Ellen, stay on the phone. I'm going to have Kelly give you a ticket to the Business Boutique Conference in October. You can attend via live stream. You don't have to come in person. October 14th through the 16th. Those speakers and that content will give you what you need to figure out your idea and get it off the ground. You can do this. I want to thank producer Ben, associate producer Kelly, and my co-host Kim. This is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Christy Wright. I am a business coach and author, and I'm joined today by my good friend, career expert, and also author, Ken Coleman. And we are taking your calls. It's Friday. We're in a great mood, and we are here for you to answer your calls, whether it's about money, life, career, business, Maybe just managing your time, because we've been talking about that a lot lately with my new book, Take Back Your Time Being Out. Whatever you need, we are here for you. We're going to go to Joe in Arlington, Virginia. Hey, Joe, how are you? Hey, uh, this is Joe. Uh, I'm calling in. I recently graduated college. Uh, I have a jo- I just I found a job, so I started working that about a month ago. Uh, I also bought a car earlier in like this end, end of December for $31,000. And right now I can, with the car prices going back up, it was brand new. I can return it. I can sell it to CarMax for about the same price. And I was just wondering what your guys' thoughts were about that. Yeah. What do you, what do you make Joe? So I make about 85,000. Okay. And, uh, the loan is a 0% loan. So I was either thinking about just selling the car now and just taking back the decision that I made with about like a $800 loss. It's not a big deal to me at this moment, but I just wouldn't have a car. Yeah. And, or my other option would be to just keep paying the loan, keep paying the loan as slow as possible, because I know that's against what you guys say, but it's like a 0% loan. So I figured that. With the five, with the five hundred dollar a month payments, like I could potentially get a higher return that return from that money risk free. So yeah, no, I was it's, just it's what you were thinking. that's never risk free. I can guarantee you that, Joe. I think your first uh, inclination to sell the car is absolutely dead on. Yes, sell the car. Um, do you have any savings? I have about thirteen thousand in my Roth IRA. And then I have about 10000 in a brokerage and about have probably like $2,000 in cash. Okay. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If you can use public transportation for a little bit to save up some cash, maybe save up another couple thousand dollars, you can use $1,000 from your savings, a uh, couple thousand that you save up in the next few months, hopefully, and then you can buy yourself a, a used car that'll get you around in the meantime, and then save up and pay cash as you upgrade your car. This is not something that you want to take out a loan for. Cars depreciate in value every single time, even though the market's weird right now and used cars are, you know, are hot right now because of manufacturing with COVID and all that, they still depreciate. They will continue to depreciate and you can't afford a $31,000 car, Joe, even on a really good income, you can't afford that. And no, 0% is not zero risk. 
every single time it's a bad idea. And so what we want you to do is just take out uh, about a thousand dollars from your savings. Um, keep a thousand in there, a thousand dollars from your savings. Save up another couple thousand and buy you something good used. Use public transportation in the meantime. Um, yeah, because in Arlington, I, I I know that area well. I mean, the metro is going to take him anywhere he probably can go and yeah. need to go in Arlington, Virginia. I mean, it's just like being in New York without a car. It's really a non-factor. Yeah. So that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Sell the car, sell the car, sell the car. All right. We're going to Ashley in Oklahoma City. Hey, Ashley, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. What's going on? Well, earlier this year, my husband and I found out that my mother-in-law had taken credit cards and loans out in his name that oh. he had no idea about. Um, what? We know that because we, we, got, we got our first mortgage and we had a crazy interest rate. And they had called me, and a credit card had been turned over to collections. We talked to her about it and, you know, asked her to buckle down and pay it. And she's not, I mean, she's giving us the minimum payment, but that's all we're getting. And any time we try to talk to her about it, it's, oh, poor pitiful me. And I don't know what to do. Okay. Okay. Let's back up here. <laughs> so, first of all, first of all, Playing the victim is a strategy. It's called manipulation. So I don't care if she's your mom, my mom, anybody's mom. Doesn't matter that she's a sweet little mother-in-law or mother. That's manipulative. Incredibly. It's also theft. That was theft. Identity theft. So again, even if you're related, it doesn't change the fact that it's illegal and not okay at all in any way. So um, Ashley, I don't know. If you do this or your husband does this, I would say he would need to do it, but you can tell me whether or not this is realistic. But there needs to be a conversation, a very different conversation that looks like this. You pay it off or I'm turning you in for identity theft. Yes. Has that happened? That's, that is the conversation. I've tried to push him to that, but he seems to be taking it a little easy on her. Yeah, it's you his think? mom. How much it's money are we talking about? Um, the personal loan was ten thousand, and then about another four or five in credit cards. And her excuse was, "I did it to help you guys." <laughs> okay. Well, I gotta know <laughs> more. What do you mean she did it to help? What, what What was it for? What was the money spent on that's supposed to help you? Um, all? Nothing. Literally nothing. Okay. We you're... are very self sufficient. We take care of ourselves. Okay. Your husband. Your us. husband needs to grow a pair. It's time. Where's the hus- Where's the dad in this situation? Just say it, Ken. Just say um, it. He's on the road, so he really he didn't realize this was going on. But okay, so um, so this is a family. Listen, I hate that you're even calling. Um, I hope you maybe maybe show your husband this call. I'd like to speak to him for a moment. What's his name? His name's Bo. Bo, Bo where are you, Bo? Okay, so I'm going to talk to Bo for a second, and you can get today's YouTube show, and you can uh, get it right to this point. Bo, here's the deal, man. Your wife's got more guts than you do, and your mom is 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 in a is in a very unhealthy place, and you're allowing it to happen, and it is affecting your life and your marriage, and this needs to be dealt with. I think Christy's right. I go with her and say, Mom, Dad, fix it now. Pay it off now or I'm turning you in. But you're but you don't have the guts to do that, Bo. And so here's what's gonna happen. Because you're afraid to be a man and talk to mommy and tell her that what she did was wrong, you're gonna end up having such sick toxicity and resentment toward her because this is never going to go away. And your dad has has the same problem you have. Neither one of you, you or your dad, have got what it takes. You just don't, because you'd have done something by now, and you need to grow a pair, both of you. Maybe you share the pair, and you talk and sit down and get this handled, because this is bad. They need to fix it, and I think the time for talking is over. Ashley, I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry you had to call in. The conversation needs to go like this. Pay it off by this date. Or we're turning you in. And Amen. then when that date comes, turn her in and follow through. This is illegal and insanely manipulative. And the more you allow it to happen, the more it is on you. Don't let it happen. Fix it now. This is The Ramsey Show.
stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. Coleman, and according to last segment, I'm not the only one who's feisty on Friday. Just going to throw that out there. We are taking your calls, <laughs> giving advice, and we got opinions. No shortage of those here. We are here for you. Give us a call, 888 825 We are here to help you with your money decisions, but let's be honest, most of the time, it's not really just about money. There's a relationship issue at play. There's some other dynamic, and we end up getting to the root issue to help you in all areas of your life. Also, if you are in debt, speaking of money, and you know what it feels like to just feel like you're drowning in bills, you may feel like you're never going to get ahead. I know what that feels like. I remember. I remember making those payments when I was working my way out of debt. Here's the good news. It doesn't have to be that way. When you attack this debt like your life depends on it, it will take back your paycheck and start building the life that you want. And we're going to help you do just that with our class, Financial Peace University. In this class, you will learn our proven plan, step-by-step -step plan, that has helped millions pay off their debt fast. But you'll never make the changes you need to pay off your debt unless you stick to a budget. That's why you also get the premium version of our budgeting tool called Every Dollar. And it's all only available with a Ramsey Plus membership. You can get ahead. You can become debt free. You can manage your money and feel in control. Start your free trial of Ramsey Plus and end this constant battle for your money. Just text TRIAL to 33789. That's TRIAL to 33789. And Ken and I are answering your calls, 888-825-5225. We're going to go to Daniel in Phoenix. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Hey, Christy. Hey, hey how Ken. can, how can Ken and I help? for taking my call. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm just calling because um, my family and I, we just moved to Phoenix from, from Maui about like three or four months ago, and um, I just don't know what to do next. We're in baby step two, and when we're in Maui, you know, we, we paid off quite a bit of debt, I think close to like 37000 and we well still done. have a student loan left, and um, yeah, just moving to Phoenix, I took a really big uh, pay cut. I'm in construction. Um, I installed known and tile and I took a pretty, pretty good pay cut, you know, like probably like a 40% pay cut. And, um, it's just been really hard. Um, I mean, we cash flowed the move and we haven't been creating any more debt, but, um, even when we were living, you know, on Maui, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't really even want to do, you know, the trade that I'm in, you know, like long term, but I just stuck it out. Uh, you know, we wanted to get gazelle and tents and pay off debt, and we did. And now it's like, now we're new in town. We have family here, which is really cool. But I just, I'm just not feeling motivated, um, just because of the pay cut, and um, just because you know, I know I don't want to do this forever. So sure. Well, let me before we dive into what you want to do. Uh, you still have plenty of motive. You should, because you still got some debt to pay off, and you've done such a great job. I mean, the amount of money that you've put towards the debt snowball is no. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do, and you did it. And so your motivation right now is, I'm still in the middle of this thing. I got to get out of it. But let's let's look further. Uh, a guy who's been doing tile and, and in a trade like that, so you've got a lot of time where you're kind of working on your own. you got a lot of time to think. Am I right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Much. So what have you thought about? What 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 would you even say, Ken? I'm not even sure I know how to get there. Uh, I've got some fear. I've got some doubt. But if I were to remove all that and I knew I could succeed in it, what would you try? Not even commit the rest of your professional life to it, but what would you try? You know, I've been thinking about, I like being a technician, you know, just how I'm a technician with like being an installer. And I just thought about the same thing, maybe like in the medical field. Yeah. Um, but it just seems like, you know, I, I feel like I'm getting in the way of myself. You Why? Know, like I'm, I'm afraid to, um, just because, you know, I'd have to go to school again for that. And well, Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't assume that. Now, unless you're not telling me, when you say technician, be more specific. And then have you researched and found out that the only way to get in that field and do that is a degree or the best way to get in that field and do that is with a degree? Answer those questions. Um, you know, I've spent maybe like an hour total just, you know, looking up, you know, different jobs like in the medical field and, you know, that doesn't require a whole lot of schooling. Um, I've looked at maybe like, uh, I think it's called like like radiography, like MRI techs or like x-ray technicians. Okay. Uh, and what's the answer? You know, is, is, is a degree the only way or the best way to get in those? Um. I think eventually it is. Um, I'm not too sure. I think there's like, you can get certified. Yes. Okay. So here's the deal. Let me, let me just back this out of the details because I don't want to put you completely on the spot and you've given me enough here. So here's the deal. You have, you've got this technical talent, this mechanical uh, making is what I would call it. This making talent, this imagination where you can lay tile and make it look great. And then the technician, you use the word technician, and that's really the way your brain works. So there, there are a lot of things that you can do that you're good at and that you love. That's talent and passion. And so I think more than an hour is required. Uh, but I don't think it's a whole lot more time, but I think you've got to really allow yourself to wonder again, like a child does when they come into this world they ask hundreds of questions a day poor christy's right in the middle of it okay with three kids under six they just naturally ask questions you've got to get that curiosity back up to say okay the talent that i have the type of work i like to do the technical nature the detailed nature precision type work you've outlined that what are all the different things i can do and you started the process let's do it a little bit more and then there's another step that i call clarify and verify so here's what you got to do you've already identified some of those technical positions in medicine or in the uh, the healthcare field i want you to i know you're new to town but you got family you can find somebody who's doing that work and do coffee, a Zoom call, a phone call, and go back to high school or college like you're doing a term paper on that person's job and ask them everything about it, how they got there, how they got qualified, what they like the most, what they like the least. You get the drill. And in clarifying what goes into getting there and what goes into doing the role, your heart will then verify either ding, 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 or and that's the process. But you got to find more options. And then once we figure that out, we go, okay, I know what I'd like to do. Now I have a good idea what it takes to get qualified and we begin that process. So get your head up. Uh, you've got a lot to offer. You just got to get yourself out there and pay attention and see what you could do and then choose and then get qualified, get connected while you're there in Phoenix. You're going to begin to meet people and then the opportunity will present itself. But this is not a scary path. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Daniel, I've got one quick question before we before we let you go. Um, you you just sound discouraged. Mm -hmm. You just sound down because I know you can make these Google searches. I know you can do this work Ken's telling you to do, but I'll be honest. I don't know if you're going to do it. What's, what's going on? Why are you so down? Why are you so discouraged? Um, I think, I mean, my wife, she started to work part time. Um, just from home. Uh, we have a, we have a son. Um, he's going to be 16 months soon. And, um, it's just really stressful at the house. Like in terms of money, I just feel like we're really close to the edge, um, with money. And, um, it's just, I just, I feel like discouraged because we were, we went from like thriving, like in Hawaii, we we're just, you know, paying off so much, so much debt. And, we saved up a lot of money to move out here and cash flow that. And then now it's like we've slowly have bled through like our savings yeah. um, living here. And um, just like this, we just got so good at a being gazelle pets like on the island that like our living expenses are actually a little bit more here. Um, yeah. Well, here's the thing, Daniel. You, you 
you're doing the right thing, but it feels like a step back because it is financially. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to mean that you can't make these steps forward. You will when you do what Tim can ask you to do. Also, stay on the line. Let's give you a free um, membership to Ramsey Plus for a year. You will get constant encouragement and motivation that will fire you back up when you start to feel discouraged, show you how to get a bigger shovel since you've had a step back. You're going to get back in the game. You just need a little gusto, a little motivation, reduce the stress at home, do what Ken asked you to do. You got this. This is The Ramsey Show. Joining me today is Ken Coleman, and we are taking your calls about your life and your money. Give us a call, 888-825-5225, and we will answer your questions. And I'm so excited because Thomas and Cassie are here on our debt-free stage. How are you guys? Very good. How are you doing? Good. Good. You are on the debt-free stage, which can only mean one thing. You are debt-free. Tell me, how much debt did you pay off? We paid off $198,256. Whoo! Ooh, that's a lot of money. What kind of debt was this? Uh, it was broken down into two car loans, one debt consolidation loan, and eight credit cards. Oh, okay. How long did that take? 24 months. Oh, my goodness. All right. Whew, okay. So that's a lot of money in 24 months. Y'all were busting it. We were. Yeah. What was your range of income during this time? Uh, we started at 130 and we finished at 166000 All right. What happened? How'd you get that income up? Uh, I took a promotion at work and... Put that to the debt. Come on. Yeah, there you yeah, go. That's how you get that shovel bigger. Good awesome. man. Awesome. Good night. Y'all were moving fast. Okay. <laughs> so so 24 months ago, what happened? Because that's a 198000 That's uh, a lot of debt. What happened 24 months ago? So 24 months ago, my wife and I were scammed uh, by a family friend. He opened up a business, um, had us co-sign for a car loan and co-sign for a uh, credit card. And um, we didn't catch it until it was too late. He had already run up $25,000 in debt. And so we self-repoed the car and got rid of that and then said, we need to get out of debt. Mm. Okay. So that's what started it. The scam is what, what's, but you had other debt other than that. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had, we had previous debt going into it, but we figured we might as well just attack it and get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That'll, that'll, that'll shake you. Yes. yes. <laughs> no, yes. And, 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 and like the previous caller that was on the show, we did actually turn it into law enforcement. So, yeah. cause I'm a law enforcement officer. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. So sometimes that's, that's, if they don't respond, that's, that's what you've got to do. Exactly. Okay. So you're a law enforcement officer. I am. Okay. What What else did you, is that the only uh, job you had during this time when you're paying off debt? Yep. All right. Way to go. That's awesome. So now you've got it paid off. How does it feel? Amazing. Oh, it feels great. You actually get to keep your money when you're paid. I bet you feel like you got a huge raise. Oh, Every day. Yeah. I actually, I actually enjoy going to work. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. It'll change how you do the work. <laughs> Who were your biggest cheerleaders through this whole process? Our kids. Our kids, my parents, um, and then extended family members that are Ramsey. So, you know, the, they run financial peace through their church up in Washington. So Awesome. And you guys are from where? Uh, we're from Rancho Cordova, California. Okay. So we're on an epic road trip. Yeah, you are. <laughs> That's awesome. That is amazing. So what <laughs> happens when uh, you realize, hey, I've been basically defrauded yeah. and I'm in big trouble. Were you familiar with Financial Peace University? Were you not familiar with the Ramsey Show, Ramsey Solution? I mean, how'd you get into this? Oh, I was definitely familiar with Ramsey. I listened to him uh, to and from work before I got into law enforcement. My wife had read the book and said, we need to get on board and we need to do this. And my parents are definitely Ramsey uh, Solution uh I guess promoters, yeah. sure. Um, and they encouraged us to come down to the live event in San Diego for uh, when he was talking about finances um, before this whole thing happened. And wow. so, you know, that was kind of what kickstarted us to really move it into gear and, you know, get rid of it. Wow. So, so you had the debt. 
you already had some of your own debt. Right. And then you you knew about us, you knew about the Total Money Makeover, been to a live event, but it was just this idea. Correct. But getting scammed is what sets you into action. It's like, Definitely. okay, all right, this is going to light a fire under us to actually ch- turn this thing around. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. What a story. I mean, hey, I hate that happened to you, but look where you are now because of it. So oh, yeah. wait, good for you for turning this thing turning this thing around. All right. What would you say for everybody listening right now? And they are in your shoes of paying off that debt. They're, you know, going to work, working the extra jobs, working the extra hours. What's the secret? What's the key to getting out of debt? Communication. Communication. And then just weekly status check-ins with your spouse, Mm -hmm. you know, through this whole process, it's definitely brought my wife and I closer together in regards to just talking about finances, but also realizing that, you know, as, as Dave says, a budget tells your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And, you know, we realized, hey, we actually can pull more money out of the budget and put it here and put it there. And the other thing is just figuring out want versus need. Yeah. I'm a spender by habit. Yeah. And so I had to curtail all that, a lot of that and realize that yeah, I don't need it. You know, it's a desire and let's get rid of the debt and then we can deal with it. There you go. I'm curious. That's, that's really interesting that you say that about uh, status check-ins, Thomas. That's really interesting. I teach people to connect with their spouse weekly on their time and their calendar, mm-hmm. but you're talking about with money and it's so important with both. What did that look like for you guys? What was a status check-in? What did that look like on a, on a weekly or monthly basis? Uh, you know, mainly it was just sitting around the, din- the dining room table and just saying, okay, where are we at? You know, do we have any extra money we can put towards this debt? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and just really getting that time where we can just talk about it and not being afraid to have that conversation. Yeah. I know a lot of times spouses don't like to talk about finances because it leads to a whole negative thing, but we actually leaned in on each other and said, okay, let's tackle this together as a family. Yeah. It's amazing when you have a shared goal, Mm -hmm. how it can bring you closer as a team because you're high five and, oh, we've got this extra amount or, oh, we can cut spending here. And um, it gives you language to it, but also gives you this, this shared motivation to that finish line. And you guys are there. Well, y'all are amazing. Well done. Well done for knocking out. And and in all fairness, we raided the kids' banks accounts. There you go. (laughs) Oh, really? Yes. So, So I got to ask you, this is a lot of money. It is. In 24 months. There, were, there had to be some major moments. Curious if you could share one of those. And then was there also a moment in the journey where it's a slog and then you felt like, okay, now we've got some real momentum and emotionally you begin to see, okay, now we're hitting, hitting this ground running. Was there a moment like that? Well, when we repoed the car mm-hmm. and turned that back in, we were still upside down 7,000 on it. And so, you know, we said, okay, um, you know, and... It, it's just a matter of, of, you know, talking about it, not being afraid to talk about it. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to, yeah, $198,000 in two years is a lot of money. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, yeah, you, you did, you know, Christmas was a little difficult, yeah. but we started financing for that and budgeting for that and saying, okay, we're going to take a little bit out of each paycheck and, and stuff like that. We can't have a, no Christmas. You planned for it. Yeah. You planned for it. Yeah. Just, Changes your behavior. Well, it goes mm-hmm. right into the budget. Okay, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna take this line item off. Okay, Christmas is done. Let's put that extra money towards the debt and keep plugging away at it. Well, y'all are amazing. Well yeah, done. Well That's done. an incredible feat. And here you stand on the other side of it. Well done. Well, we have a copy of the Legacy Journey because that is definitely in the next chapter in your journey. And we have a copy of the Total Money Makeover that you can give to someone else as a gift, pay it forward, hopefully set them on this path as well. All right, y'all. We've got Thomas and Cassie with Tyler and Caitlin paid off $198,000 in 24 months, making a range of $130,000 to $166,000. Count it down for me. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! Yes! Oh, that's awesome. Ken, that's a lot of money. No. Almost $200,000 yeah. in two years, making 166 at the top. Those are some major yeah. sacrifices, but now here they are, completely debt-free, yeah. not a single payment to worry about. And that is just, I think with, with people listening right now, if you're listening right now and you have this mountain of debt, 
100,000, 200,000, it feels impossible mm. when you're looking at the mountain. Uh, you know, I love a good running example. When I'm running a hill, I don't look at the top of the hill. I'm like, just get to that mailbox. Just get to that mailbox. Get to that fire hydrant. Get to that light post. Get to that tree. And if you can break it down, just like we teach in the debt snowball, break it down into the baby steps, into your debt snowball, and you just tackle it one step at a time, you'll get there. You'll get to the top of that mountain. You'll get that debt paid off. You'll be calling into us doing your debt-free scream, and you will never look back. I tell people all the time, the voice of debt is always the voice of regret. No one loves their debt like, oh, I love all these payments. When you get there, you'll never look back. You'll never go back. You'll never feel like that again. So, so, so cool. That's awesome. Thomas and Cassie, 198000 in two years. Pretty impressive. This is The Ramsey Show. Joining me today is Ken Coleman, and we are taking your calls. 888-825-5225. Had an awesome debt-free scream in the last segment, and now we are going to the phones. We've got Dion in San Diego, California. Hey, Dion, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. How can Ken and I help? I want to know, as a mother, should I be instructing my kids to, um, who are 18, 20, and 22 to get a credit card to build up their credit for themselves so that they can buy a home someday? Do you need to build up credit to buy a home someday? What, no. are, what are best practices? Well, here's the thing, Dion. It depends on who you ask. Because if you ask about anyone else anywhere, they will say, yes, you need a credit score and you need a credit card and you need this. You can't do anything. And that's simply untrue. Is it the easier way that's culturally normal that everyone accepts? Yeah, but we're not we're not normal here. We're weird because we want people to live their lives debt free. We were just talking to the couple that just did their debt free scream and they were in Las Vegas and they printed we're debt free on M&Ms and the person printing them at the M&M store said, is this true? Like she couldn't believe it. It's a weird way to live. It's also the better way to live where you don't Mm -hmm. have debt. The good news is, Dion, is that you can. Oh, Ken's going to show the M and M's here. Yeah, I mean, if you're you watching on YouTube. Uh, I, I don't even know if they can zoom in or the guys down below will. But it says we are debt free on the M and M. By we, the way, I'm going to eat it while you continue. <laughs> We're just going to. It's Friday. We <laughs> can do it. Fantastic, we Dion. So, so here's the thing. They taste better. Debt free M and M's taste better. <laughs> <laughs> Dion's like, will you please answer my question and stop munching? In I my have ear? ADHD. Ah, I'm here for you. Listen, all you have to do is something called manual underwriting for a mortgage. Your kids, your adult children will be able to buy a house someday. And you can show proof of payment for like electricity bills from rental properties and other ways to show um, for if you need some type of proof of something to, to rent an apartment or whatever. Um, it might be a slightly more work and steps, but it's worth it to live your life debt free. The problem, Dion, is that so many high school students, college students, and young adults, they, in the name of building credit, rack up tons and tons of debt. And they end up calling us in their late 20s asking how they can dig themselves out of this mess that they made. And they didn't mean to. And it all started with a free t-shirt or a free pizza or I need to build my credit score. And they all end up a statistic in this, the most indebted generation in the entire history of the world. And you just don't want that for your kids, Right. No, you don't no. want that for your kids. Not not in the name of building credit. You can do what you need to do, live your life, even buy a house without a credit score and without debt. In fact, uh, you know this is what millions of people have done. If you'll stay on the line, Dion, we will send you a copy of Rachel Cruz and Dave Ramsey's book. 
smart money, smart kids. They talk about how to raise smart money, smart kids. Obviously they have some examples for younger kids, but even when you have adult children, some of those principles of living debt free, of not building a credit score, they are in there and that will give you maybe some more language to talk to your kids about it and give you the practical steps on how to follow through for, through on it. I got to say this real quick. Dia, listen, you better remember what Chrissy said because Chrissy's right. 100% right. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to go back and tell some people, yeah, I call the Ramsey show and Chrissy Wright, best selling author, told me this and they're going to go, she's crazy. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She, they need a credit score. They're wrong. Please read the book. Please do your own homework. She's right. They don't have to have a credit score to live a very desirable life. Please, please, please. Because everybody's going to tell them, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Yeah, actually, she does know what she's talking about. I uh, just want to warn you, when you tell people what you're going to do, they're going to say that. Well, and, and it's like Dave always says, don't take finance advice from broke yeah. people. The people saying, oh, they need a credit <laughs> score are broke. Yep. They're part of that statistic, too, with credit yep. cards and bills and credit card debt up to their eyeballs. So, of course, they think that's normal because they're a part of that. Yep. I'm telling you, Ken and I don't have credit cards. Yeah, we teach true. people every day how to live your life without credit cards, credit scores, debt, stress. I don't even know what my credit score is. I, I would assume mine's a zero because I don't do anything. God, I don't know. such a failure. Anyway, anyway, I hope that helps. All right, let's go to Kyle <laughs> in New Orleans. Hey, Kyle, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. How um, can Ken and I help? So, so my call is more about a life advice kind of question than a financial question, All although right. it has financial components. So I'm going to lay a few of those out for you just to set the stage. Um, I'm a programmer. I I just turned 33. I'll, I'll, I'm, a, I'm a late bloomer, too. I'll, I'll just say that right off the bat. I'm a late bloomer. Um, I have been working at the same job for uh, seven years. And that seven years ago is when I graduated from college. I have a BS in uh, mathematics. And the issue is I knew from day one of getting this job um, that it wasn't really going to be, it wasn't really going to do it for me in the long run. That it wasn't going to provide the sense of fulfillment that I think I need from a career. Well, maybe I'm wrong. You're um, right. You're right, by the way. Don't and, ignore that. And I am, I have just been struggling. It, that's created this sort of malaise over me that's been with me for like five to seven years. And I've tried my best to like break through that malaise in those seven years and get to a place where I can like decompress and reassess for the next career move. And I've tried to, like, I've tried my best to avoid the, the, unpardonable sin of like quitting a job without having anything lined up. But I, I mean, I'm getting 33. I mean, I'm not getting any younger. This, it feels like this is something that if I don't do now, I'm just never going to do it. All right. And, all right. So hold on. So Kyle, I, I appreciate you laying this out, but when, when someone says I've tried to break out of the malaise, you're, you're trying the wrong thing. You need to find something, go, go dig and develop a plan and move into it when the opportunity opens up, not try to break through the malaise. Here's the reality. There's tons of research out there, but the most recent research came last year in 2020 um, out of London where it showed that if you are in a job that you have no meaning for, that the emotional and mental duress is close to the grief that comes when losing a loved one. So this malaise you're talking about is very, very real, but to try to break through that and just gut through it, you're not going to be able to. What you've got to do is move on. And right out of college, you knew this was not a long-term play. So what's the long-term play? A guy who's been thinking about this for five to seven years has had an idea or two come from his heart. We've only got about a minute and a half. Tell me what it is. What's the thing you would love to try? Well, I wish that I could do something that involves like mentoring and like teaching people more. Teaching people um, what? Be really specific right now and don't overthink this. What would you like to teach people? What subject matter? Something to do with math or science. Okay. Um, something that I believe is objective truth that will empower them. Awesome. Hey, can I tell you something? 
Kyle, that's a fantastic yeah. answer. So let's let's just play this out real quick. I got seven stages that'll lead to the work you were born to do. Get clear is stage okay. one. I think you're pretty close to walk into stage two, which is get qualified. So you've got to ask yourself, if I was going to teach, where would I teach? This is homework you need to do. Secondly, okay. what would it take to get me there? What education would I need? What do I need to learn? What experience would I need? What do I need to do? How much is that going to cost me? That's the economic question. And then finally, how long is it going to take me to do those things? That's the expectation question. Those four questions will yield answers that become a plan. This is what I need to learn. This is what I need to do. Here's how much it's going to cost me. And based on my financial reality, here's how long that is going to take. Now, my man, I just want you to feel for a second, just for one second. What if you on Monday morning showed up and, and were teaching science and math. At the end of the day, you were driving home. What do you think that might feel like? Oh, boy. Um, good or bad, Kyle? I overthink it. It, it, it would feel good. I yes, guess. there you go. So don't overthink this. When you think about work you want to do, how does it make you feel? Go after that. I want to thank producer Ben, associate producer Kelly, and my co-host Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer for The Ramsey Show. This episode is over, but if you heard about an event, product, or service and didn't have a chance to write it down, don't worry. We list everything you've heard about during this episode in the podcast show notes section or head to theramseyshow.com. Thanks for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life and your money. I'm Christy Wright, and joining me today is my good friend, Ken Coleman, and we are here for you. We're taking your calls at 888-825-5225. If you have a question about money, paying off your debt faster, what to save for, how to work the baby steps, we're here for you. Give us a call, 888 825 And if you follow Ken or myself, then you probably know we love to talk about more than just money. I love helping people with businesses. So if you have a business question, call in for that. A question about your career, maybe what your next step is. And of course, because my new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance is now available for pre-sale. We are taking all questions about time management, productivity, balance, how we can do what matters most to create a sense of balance in your life. Give us a call. 888-825-5225. I got a question about the new yes, book. Yes, let's have it. Uh, that is available. So when you were diving through this, a lot of this comes from your own personal experience. I've heard you say you wrote it for yourself, which is the best kind of book because you know it works. Uh, what are you finding that is maybe one or two of the biggest time suckers. I know I'm making that up. That doesn't sound very official, but you get my point. Where do you see a lot of the stress there? Yeah. Well, I go into some of the time stealers in the book. Oh, time stealers. I like that. Yeah. That's yeah, but, so but much I actually, better. I actually do really talk about that in the book. But to me, that is more of an ancillary issue. Yeah. I think... I think the core thing that I really love to dig into through the through the majority of the book, and you heard me talk about this at Summit. We yeah. were at Entree Leadership Summit together. But here's what I found about life balance. We don't know what it is. We just know we don't have it. Like, yeah. like if you ask people what this means to them, they can't really define it. So it becomes this shadow that haunts us, mm -hmm. and we always feel like we're failing. And so I, what I wanted to do in this book, Ken, is I wanted to redefine it. Because I think many people don't have a definition for it, but they're always asking about it. It's the number one question I'm asked all the time. But the second thing is, I think we feel an incredible pressure to do everything for an equal amount of time, or we do everything perfectly. So let's say you have a day where, you know, let's say you put in a really long day. 
it's a 12 hour day, 14 hour day. And at the end of the day, you did what was right because you knew that was going to be a 14 hour day. That was going to be a hard day. You planned your day around it. But at the end of the day, the inclination is, well, I didn't work out. I didn't spend time with my kids. I'm failing. And so the, the implied pressure is we've got to do everything every day and we've got to do everything perfectly. And, and I want to set people free from that pressure because I don't think it's true. I don't think it's realistic and I don't think it's even desirable. And so the definition that I built this whole book around is life balance isn't doing everything for an equal amount of time. It's about doing the right things at the right time. Yeah. And when you do the right things at the right time, you will feel that sense of balance that you've been looking for. So for me, simply defining it for people and then making it tactical through these five steps to create balance, that's what takes this elusive idea that haunts us and gives us practical application for our life and sets us free from the guilt and the pressure to do everything every day. And then you can, next time you can work that 14 hour day and go, hey, I did the right thing at the right time. I'm proud of how I used my time and I actually feel balanced. But it wasn't because I did everything because we're never going to do everything yeah, perfectly. Yeah. And I hope it's a, a message that really sets people free. Yeah, I, I think it will because I think that one simple statement that you made is very profound. It's, it's not about doing everything. It's the right thing. Yeah. That does really make a person feel like uh, what has been kind of called balance. It's just, it makes you feel focused on, hey, this is where my focus is. I've heard you say that. When I'm at work, I'm focused on work. When I'm at home, I'm focused on those three gorgeous babies, you know. So it, I, I think that is a breakthrough for folks to realize, look, it's, I can't do everything. It's just impossible. Yeah. But, but then it, it also help, gives you permission to be present in what you are doing, yes. whether that's work or home. Yeah. And what's interesting, Ken, is when we ask about balance, which I, I am asked about this all the time. I think what we're really asking is something else. I think we're saying, how can I be proud of how I spend my time? How can I be happy in my life? Mm -hmm. How can I be confident in my choices when I say yes to this thing or that thing? And what's fascinating is when you follow my steps to balance I lay out in this book, you actually, that is the result. You are happier. You are more confident. You are more uh, fulfilled and you feel that sense of balance. But it wasn't because you balanced everything perfectly like a scale with trade-offs. Mm -hmm. It was because you learned to align your time with what's right right now and then be proud of those things. And so it's a different approach and I think it actually solves the problem in a better way. I was in a country store not too long ago up in Brevard, North Carolina, a beautiful mountain community where my in-laws had retired to. And, you know, it was one of those frou-frou stores, you know, yeah. so it's like, Stacey's going in, so I have to. Sure. And so we're just walking around and she's shopping and I'm just perusing. And I saw a little sign on a shelf and I'll never forget it. And it said, you can do everything you want, just not at the same time. Yep. And... You're in, I mean, I want to ask you about seasons Yeah. because, you know, I know your journey, right? So I know your story a little bit more than probably the average person uh, being a colleague of yours, but now you're in, it feels like you're in several seasons at once, <laughs> but you're getting ready to go back to, not getting ready. You are moving back into seminary, which is a graduate level program, uh, while being a Ramsey personality and everything that comes with that, a show, writing, coaching, uh, you're a wife to Matt. And then you're a mom of three awesome kiddos. Um, what would you say to men and women right now that feel like I'm straddling several seasons? Yeah, yeah. I think I think when we take the pressure off to do everything, then it gives us this reminder that you have permission to do what's right right now. So as an example, what's right right now? Okay, you gave some examples there of like work and my kids and seminary. Th that's a lot. But there are a lot of things that I don't do. Yeah. And so because I don't have time for those, those are not a priority right now. When I, let's say, for example, you know, my house isn't as clean as I want, which it never is, or I'm not working out as much as I want, which I am not in this season, or seeing my friends as much as I want. Instead of feeling guilty for that, yeah. I'm like, oh, well, that's just not right right now. Let me give you another example. I would love to play on an adult soccer league someday. I would love to travel to Europe. I would love to do lots of things. And you could look at that and go, oh, well, boo-hoo, poor me. I'm never going to get to that. No, no, no. Just because something's not yeah. right right now doesn't mean it's never right. Yeah. It just means it's not right right not now. This so season. It gives you yeah. permission to yeah. shake the guilt of all this pressure and good things, good opportunities, desires that you have and say, it doesn't mean it's never right. It's just not right right now. So that, that is probably one of the most powerful questions you can ask yourself. What's right right now? Mm. Do that and watch how it gives you permission to be present for that thing and shake the guilt of all the things that are not right right now. By the way, if you are struggling with feeling out of balance, if you feel like, I don't know why I feel so busy all the time. I don't know why I feel out of balance. I actually created a quiz to help you get to the root of it. 
I have identified four main causes of being out of balance. And this quiz is going to show you which one you might struggle with and what to do about it. You can take my balance quiz by texting busy to 33789. That's busy to 33789. Figure out why you feel out of balance in the first place. And by the way, that's free. So I yeah. don't know why anybody wouldn't text yes. busy to 33789 right now and just see where you stand. And don't forget the new book, Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance on pre-sale. RamseySolutions.com, ChristyWright.com. Go get it right now. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promo codes they run every month, you'll save even more. Use promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from David in Texas. He writes in, I'm 31 years old, debt-free, including my condo, and... I have $65,000 in savings. I currently work for the government in IT. I chose this path because as a teenager, I was painfully shy and didn't like interacting with people. Now I'm mature, personality has changed, and I love being with and helping people. I'd like to go back to school to be a nurse, which I can complete in less than three years. I can afford my living expenses and the school cost with the savings I have. Would you recommend that I make this jump with a nursing degree? and IT background, I could pivot to health informatics after a few years of experience as a nurse. Yes, and it's not even a jump. Uh, way to go, David. This is the biggest no-brainer in the history of questions. <laughs> uh, all of the money situation is taken care of. You're cash flowing. There's no debt here. It's clearly passion for you and uh, gives you a ladder by which you can continue to advance. I wish I could add more to this question, but there's nothing there. It's a no-brainer, and again, not a jump. This is going to be a really cocky stroll. <laughs> you know? like I mean, he's got this. I like that. And that, by the way, that's what we want at Ramsey Solutions. We don't want you taking big jumps, financially or professionally. It's not necessary. Uh, I think we, we romanticize this stuff from movies and, and stuff like this and some of these social media uh, doofuses that are out there that are, you know, posing next to private jets and telling you, oh, just go for it. Uh, eh. Maybe not. Maybe not. You know what's interesting, though, is I think that so often people see it as a jump, not because the money's not there, like in David's case, but because it just feels scary. Yeah, oh, sure. Oh, it just feels scary because it's new. You put nailed the, it. Put, put the plan on paper. Put the See how you can afford this on paper and let the information... Yeah. Give you the confidence that you are okay. We get that a similar call here on the Ramsey Show often mm -hmm. where people are scared to do something, scared to buy something, scared to change jobs, and they have the money. It's just scary because it's new. It's not because you can't yes. afford it. You absolutely can, and you should, yeah. and you should do it. Yeah. I love it. All right, let's go to Joshua in Indianapolis. Hey, Joshua, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you all today? Good. How can Ken and I help? My question is my wife and I are on uh, Baby Step 2. We live in a 120-year-old house. It needs a lot of renovations. It's our starter home. We've been in it for about eight to nine years. 
Uh, we were considering upgrading all of our friends around us are. We have not because we are kind of on hold. We wanted to talk to you guys about what would be the best thing to do. We owe $29,000 on it. Uh, we're real close to paying it off. But, again, it's going to need a lot of renovation once it's done. So do we pay it off, um, reno it, maybe stay in it, maybe sell it now, maybe upgrade now? What do you guys think? I need some help. How much debt do you have total other than the 29 that you owe on the house? We owe twelve k on a car, and that's all. Oh, okay. When you say it needs tons of renovations, but you've lived in it for eight or nine years, what renovations are you talking about? Uh, well, we recently found uh, some mold in our bathroom. Um, the home hasn't been updated in about 40 to 50 years. We bought it as is. Um, it's livable, and we've enjoyed staying there, but it's not really suiting our needs anymore. Um, the kitchen needs redone, you know, basically – cosmetics but also you know the electrical is going to need replaced in the next five or six years i had that looked at um the roof is fine um but the foundation's got some cracks in it things like that how yeah. much though i think christy asked the right question how much how much um, money how is much? it going to cost to do all of that i would say 50 to sixty thousand. all right um okay so what wh- why are you thinking about selling it y'all want to move anyway because you said the house doesn't suit your needs. Uh, repairs aside, you said it doesn't. What, what does that mean? Yes, repairs aside, we, we're we leaning towards moving anyway. I want to move, yeah. you know, because of the mountain of work. My wife likes it, but she's also considering moving as well. Okay, how much, closer to our kids. how much do you guys make? Uh, 48 to 50K a year. Okay. Uh, it, other than the 29,000 that you owe in the house and other than whatever potential repairs, let's ignore that for just one second. Um, how long will it take you to pay off this 12,000? On the car? Mm-hmm. Oh, a uh, year and a half at the most is my plan. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. How much is the house worth? you think if you put it on the market today, you got an idea? Uh, I would say 50, 55. And you got that much. You got to put in repairs in it. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and did you? And that's your and that's your uh, combined income is the forty eight to fifty. That's both of you. Yes, sir. That's combined. Interesting. I'm a little surprised the house is only worth fifty. Is it really run down? Uh, we bought it for thirty nine nine. It's an old farmhouse in kind of the middle of nowhere. Um, I have not had it appraised in uh, since we bought it. So have you had a have you be. had a real estate professional which you could contact at RamseySolutions.com, dot com come out and take a look at it and give you a really good idea what the market will bear. I mean, how educated of a guess was that that you gave me on fifty thousand? Uh, it's not a very good educated guess. I have not had someone out. All right. Well, I think that's worth it. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you, you really got to see what this thing is worth. You got any acreage? Uh, no, sir. Just a half acre. Okay. Yeah, um, I think you need some more information. Yeah. Um, what I was okay. going to say before you said the mold, what I was going to say is pay off your debt and then sell the house. You know, I'm not opposed to you moving and getting a new house. That's fine. You know, upgrading your house a little bit. Get definitely getting something that's that's maybe newer, better, whatever. Um, you've got some money to be able to put down on it. But but you want to do that debt free. You want to do that after baby step two when you have three to six months of emergency fund for when things come okay. up because yeah. they will. So that's kind of the, mm-hmm. the baby step. You've got a $1,000 emergency fund. Then you pay off all your debt in baby step two. Then you save up three to six months of expenses. And then you save to put a down payment on a house. Now, because you have okay. some equity in this house, you could use that when you sell it. The only concern that I have for you is the mold situation. Yes. And so that may be yeah. something that would that would kind of trump this where you just need to get out. And you maybe get out, sell the house, take the equity, pay off your debt, and put something down on something small. Or maybe it's something where you... Uh, sell the house, take that money, pay off your debt, and then rent for a little bit until you save up some more and then buy something else that you want. I think that you, I think that you need to take care of, of your situation with the mold for sure. Um, but, but like Ken said, let's go ahead and get a real appraisal. Let's figure out how much this is actually worth. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think you do make the move, and I think when you do, you pay off your debt. Yeah. Um, maybe you move to another house. Maybe you rent for a while. Um, but either way, I think we need to get out of that house because the, the mold is something you yeah. don't mess around with. But I, I, I would tell him, uh, I had to deal with it. We bought a house recently and discovered it when doing some renovating. Yeah. The, the mold remediation is not as scary and crazy as you think. Yeah. Usually, I yeah. have no idea, so yeah. I don't want to sound like you know uh, Mr. House Reno guy. I'm not. Yeah. But Christy's right. That's a health issue, and if you're going to sell it anyway, 
driveway, let's say we decide to sell it and rent, which is one of the options you gave him, mm -hmm. that mold's going to need to be taken care of. Yeah. So yeah. take care of that first and uh, and then go from there. I think. And run your options, yeah. yeah. But I think a real estate agent can help you see how much it's actually worth because that's going to be really, really important yeah. to you making the best decision. The other thing, Ken, I think is is hard with some of these some of these situations is we don't have all the information and we're trying to make a decision. That's right. Right? Like it, whether it's with a job, yeah. uh, someone called, you know, in yeah. the last hour about yeah. like, well, I think I want to be a tech for this thing. And yeah. you're like, well, do you know? And when you have limited information, you're not going to make the best decision. Decision. Yes. But the great news is the information is out there. Yeah. If you do some of the work. You and I both talk about this all the time. The other thing that you need all the information is it allows you to overcome fear. There's yes. a natural amount of fear attached to any change yes. or any new thing. But it, it doesn't have to be you know, paralyzing fear when we have information and, and you make a very good point, get all the facts and then it's not as scary as it needs to be. I mean, there's natural fear going into anything new as you touched on last segment, but my goodness, uh, to put the puzzle together, we need all the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And ask multiple people. If you're getting quotes on mold remediation, yes. get three quotes. Yeah. Not just call. one person. Yeah. You know, whatever you're doing, do your homework. Yeah. Yes, it takes work, but it pays off in the long run, yeah. not only in a financial sense, but also in your peace of mind of knowing you did your due diligence and you're doing the best thing. This is The Ramsey Show. States Census Bureau, nearly one in 10 people relocated to a new city last year, and that was in 2020. That means this year, there's a good chance you or someone you know is planning a big move. Now, I know it feels like there are a thousand unknowns you're juggling when you're relocating, but you cannot lose focus of one of the most important personal and financial factors in your move, your housing. I recommend hiring a quality real estate agent like one of our endorsed local providers or ELPs to help you find the right home in your new city. ELPs are top performing experts in their local market and have years of experience helping folks just like you make successful moves. It's easy to get instantly connected with an endorsed local provider agent. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent and talk with a Ramsey trusted agent about how they can help with your relocation. That's RamseySolutions.com slash agent agent. I'm Chrissy Wright and Ken Coleman and I are answering your calls 888-825-5225. We're on for a couple more segments. If you've got a call, if you've got a question rather, give us a call. All right, we're going to go to John in San Francisco, California. Hey, John, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. How can, can I help? All right. I'll try and keep this short. Um, I'm 24. I live in San Francisco with a roommate making about 99K gross. Um, I recently got a job offer from a fund. Um, I work in investing uh, for about 160 to 170,000, um, but a lot of that is through bonuses. Um, the catch is that it's a really far commute away, and having a car in this city is insanely expensive. So, looking at the difference after taxes, taxes on the bonus, you know, the various costs of having a car for the first time and being a young man, um, it just it comes out only to about 10K net a year. Uh, and another wrinkle is just, I'm not sure it's that great for my career growth. Uh, you know, it, it is a sort of more direct investing role, but I, I just don't know if this sort of, you know, if a long commute is worth it. So that's the real question. I'm going to let Ken answer this because I know he's going to dig into this and ask you lots of great questions. I just want to call out from the get go, John. It sounds like you don't want it. <laughs> Like you're making a strong case of why you shouldn't take it. So I just want to call out. It sounds like you've, you're already leaning that way. Am I right? 
Well, I'm really, I'm, so this is the other wrinkles. I'm really well supported in my current role. I have a fantastic manager. She's really supportive. She wrote to the executive committee with sort of an offer and my ask to sort of match and keep me and keep me to no. stay. John, um, John, and John, 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 yeah. John, listen, yeah. this is so simple. <laughs> so I'm also guessing the one thing you didn't say, I'm going to take a guess. I don't mind if I'm wrong, that your current mm-hmm. job also really represents a ladder for you professionally, that there's opportunity for growth there, Correct. Um, yeah, it also will let me follow, um, you know, my girlfriend, she's going to law school next year. It's just, it's just a much more flexible working environment. I could follow her. I can yeah. see myself moving yeah. up. So and that's this, all this that relational is piece is all bonus. So here's the deal. Uh, I would say no, and I think you called us today for permission to say no to a job offer that seems <laughs> really, really awesome. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you why, John. And, and, and I want to help you feel really good about this an hour from now or three hours from now. So, Christy, here's what I found. Taking calls from people who have taken promotions and six months later, they call me. And they go, Ken, I took a really great job and I don't like it. I said, well, well why would you take it? And they go, because the money was really good. And there's you one feel other like factor. You have to. That's it. But there's one other factor. When we get a job offer, it's not just the money. All right. It's also we feel wanted and Mm -hmm. everybody wants to feel wanted. Oh, they want me. Oh, that feels good. And then the money makes it almost a it is good. It feels good to be wanted. And then the extra money makes you go. This is the right decision. And John, I'm really thankful that you called us. Thanks for being vulnerable with us. And your gut is absolutely right. It's not worth it for multiple reasons that you already laid out. This is a great decision for you to say no. Say no to the good so that you can say yes to the best. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Sometimes promotions become traps. I've heard it over and over again. You've got to uh, step back and say, all right, because here's what I teach, Christy. It's never the money. It better be the next rung on the professional ladder. It better be about purpose because I'm going to tell you something. More dollar signs but less significance uh, always leads to somebody going, man, I boy, this was the wrong move. So good on you, sir. Say no. And here's the problem, Chrissy. We talked about this before. Uh, when you gave great advice to somebody and I said, they're going to question. People are going to go, you're crazy to turn this down. No, John, you're not. For all the reasons that you've already determined. That you already knew before you called us. The other thing I want to call out is this is not the only opportunity you'll ever have. That's correct. You're good and yeah. you're going to continue to grow yeah. and expand your skills and be in high demand. And there may be another job that offers you the same amount of money or more that is closer next to your girlfriend, all the things. Yeah. This is not the, when we make decisions based on fear and scarcity, yes. they're also always bad decisions. And so we don't, we don't want to make decisions based on that. This is not the only good opportunity. You had your mind made up before you called us, but I'm glad that we could confirm it yeah. for you. All right, let's go to Cody in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hey, Cody, how are you? Cody, you there? All right. All right. No, Cody. Well, I, you know, Ken, the thing that is interesting to me about this last call about John and his current company is, and you made this such a good point. When we see dollar signs, we stop thinking clearly. We think that that's the next it's thing all about we feeling. have to do. I feel so good about and people the are going to tell you you're crazy. Money. Yeah. People are going to tell you you're crazy yeah. for not taking the money. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing. You're going to end up in that spot, but then your old position may be gone. If you took the position, you're Mm -hmm. calling the Ken Coleman show. I'm miserable. I thought I was supposed to take it. I think there's also this pressure that like you have to, or you're missing out. You have to, or you'll never be asked again. You have to, or it's the only job out there. I think you're absolutely right. And it's just not true. It's not true. And I I will tell you, there's so much fear of peers. What are other people going to say if I don't take this? And that we cannot underestimate that when we're alone with our thoughts. Um, it's okay to feel that because you love these people. They're, they speak into your life. But at the end of the day, you got to go, they're not the ones that are going to follow this path. They can give me advice all they want to. They can give me perspective all they want to. But it's my path. It's not their path. And I, I tell you, you know, because of the business that you and I are in, I mean, you and I really are in the business of helping people reach their dreams. I mean, really. And I got to tell you, I have seen more and more and more that the friends and family members who poo-poo the pursuit of the dream, 
many times are doing it because they don't want to be left behind themselves. Mm. It's that insecurity they're projecting. They didn't. That's it's interesting. It. They didn't mm. chase their own. And when they see you go, it's le- it's not that they want to hold you back. It's not that they have ill will. Sure. Because I dug into that. I was like, how could the people that, that love us the most discourage sure. us the most? Sure. It's their own fear. And you just nailed it. It's projection mm-hmm. because they go, I didn't chase it. I don't want you leaving me in the middle of the road while you're moving forward. I'm or I chased it. I chased it and I didn't work. I, mm-hmm, whatever and, happened. Right. And so we've got to be careful to say, do I believe this is right? Yeah. Do I believe it's right? I mean, you, that's, you were talking about earlier, do the right thing. And the right thing is, hey, what's the next rung on the ladder for me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Regardless of what anybody thinking else long thinks. Term. Thinking long yes. term. Not immediate paycheck, but long yes. term. What is is this going to move me in the direction I want to be? Is this the location I want to be? Is this aligned with my goals of where I want to be? You coach business owners all the time on this, small business owners. Like, what's the right move? You know, there's a temptation yes. there to grow too quick or to take a big risk. Well, and I, I tell people this with anything in life, whether it's in business and how you manage your time, in a career move. If you don't begin with the end in mind, yeah. you'll end up crossing someone else's finish line. Ooh. And you have got Whoa. to start with your vision. I believe she just dropped a mic, folks. I someone think that's what the kids Someone call. tweet that. Stitch it on a I, pillow. Is that what they call it? You dropped a mic. <laughs> Drop your headset, please, as you take us to break. That was really good. Say it one more time. If you don't begin with the end in mind, you will end up crossing someone else's finish line. And, and we're out. This is The Ramsey Show. are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream. Proverbs 18, 4. What you do has greater impact than what you say. Stephen Covey said that. That's a good one. It's like parenting. (laughs) Do as I say, not as I do. Boy, isn't that the truth. (laughs) All right. Ken Cullen and I are answering your calls today. This has been a great Friday and Cody is back with us from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hey, Cody, how are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good. How can Ken and I help today? Hey, so I'm 26 years old. I just started on the Baby Steps, my Baby Step 3. Um, I have a full-time job, make about 40000 a year plus overtime. Um, and then I also volunteer at our local EMS agency about 2,000 hours a year. Cool. Um, so I'm wondering how do I balance that volunteering stuff, which I love and have a lot of fun time or fun you know, doing, with maybe picking up a second job, and build, you know, increasing that income. And increasing what? Your income? The income. Yeah. Yeah. So you're in, did you say baby step three? Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, Cody, you're doing great. To be 26 years old and debt free and working on your three to six months emergency fund, you're starting to get into the, the, the part of the baby steps that are a little less intense. And that doesn't mean we're not intentional. Right. We're definitely intentional. But there's not this like uh, gazelle intensity where you have to go as hard and fast as you can to get through four, five, and six. Yes, you want to get your, your emergency sure. fund funded, but it's not this sense of urgency. How much do you have in savings right now? Um, right now I have about 1500 in my emergency fund. Okay. So you want to build that up. What would three to six months be for you? Sure. Um, I'm looking at starting around 10,000 for now. Okay. Cool. 10,000 just to, you know, give, give a little extra cushion. Yeah. And what do you make a year? Uh, about 40,000. Okay, cool. Well, so plus overtime. So sure. 
Well, you're doing great. I'm going to I'm going to suggest you do something super tactical and I literally I talk about this in my book um on balance. And that is for you to sit down and do an exercise where you write out what are your most important priorities. Now, this sounds like a simple task. Mm-hmm. Cody, it can be really hard. It can be really hard to say, mm-hmm. okay, in this season, this season being baby step three, this season being 26 years old, this season making 40,000 a year, all the things that kind of define the parameters of this season in your life. I want you to write down what is most important, one, two, three, four, five, in order. Now, it doesn't mean on any given week that can't change or any given day that can't change, but what it's going to force you to do is it's going to force you to decide which is more important to you right now. Getting your income up, getting through baby step number three. With only 1500 I would say that that probably should be at the top. But it doesn't mean you can't volunteer. It might just mean you volunteer, I don't know, 200 hours this year instead of 2,000. And then when you get your emergency fund, you're able to ramp that back up. So it just, it forces you to put into a hierarchy what is most important, what is second most important, third most important, and so on. Obviously, your full-time job is going to be your primary source of income from a financial sense. That's your most important second getting this, these, um, these hours, you know, these hours in the overtime and so on to be able to get your income up. And then third volunteer after that. But if we try to treat everything as if it's created equal, then when push comes to shove, we don't know how to make decisions and we don't make any traction. And so you have permission to focus on what's most important to you. You just need to decide what that is. And it was just like Ken and I were talking about earlier. If you were um, listening to the show earlier, just because something's not right right now, doesn't mean it's not ever right. Mm-hmm. Maybe next year you work 2,000 hours. And, and from there, you're right. able to keep that volunteer up. So it's just it's just focusing on the right thing at the right time. And when you focus on the right thing at the right time, you're not only going to be feel balanced, you're also going to make progress on your finances, which is what we love helping people do through the baby steps here at Ramsey Solutions. So if you do that, write out your list, and then it will remind you, hey, What's most important right now is getting my income up, just like you said, getting that emergency fund up. And maybe when you get your emergency fund to $6,000, you ramp up your hours volunteering. And then they go up to 500, then they go up to 1,000. It can be a gradual increase of hours. It doesn't have to be your whole emergency fund is funded fully before you get to volunteer to the level that you'd want to. It can be a gradual turning on the faucet, as we say a lot of times. But it just helps you remember what's most important right now so you don't get distracted. Yeah, you know, and I would just encourage you, Cody. Chrissy's absolutely right. Uh, remember why you volunteer. Uh, you know, focus on on the the why and, and and what result you're after and why you show up. And don't get hung up on well, I sure would like to volunteer this many hours and I'm not getting to. Don't focus on that. I would just do a little shift and say, this is awesome that I'm even in a financial position, uh, in a life position, to where I can do this. And remind yourself what the heart is in the volunteering for. And then I think you're going to just be so full of gratitude that you're really not going to be thinking anymore about, well, I sure would like to do more hours. And I think if you do that, um, you're going to be fine. And again, I just want to echo what Christy said. You're off to a great start uh, in life. You've got a wonderful path ahead of you. I love your heart. I think there's going to be some wonderful things that come out of this. And the other thing I would tell you is that as you're volunteering and you're spending time with this organization, uh, pay attention, be a human sponge, get that antenna up and pay attention for what might be uh, future opportunities for you uh, because there's clearly some mission involved in this volunteering as it always is. So good on you. You're a fantastic young man. Thanks for the call. You know, Ken, when I was a uh, young life leader years ago, I was a young life leader from 2006 to 2012, I think. And I was a leader in high school, I mean, in in college as well. But what's interesting is when I felt, started to feel this tension where I was showing up to clubs and showing up to leader meetings and it felt like this was not right for me anymore. Mm. That was hard Yeah, because your heart was so in it. It was. And it was also, it started to feel like, well, because this used to be right, it should always be right. And I think sometimes when our season changes, whether it changes because of family, whether it changes because of our priorities, whether it changes because of financial reasons, like we're trying to mm-hmm. pay off our debt, that can be hard to let go of what was and accept this new thing that is now, what is right right now. And so I just want to encourage Cody, but anybody listening, if you're in that that place where you're transitioning between seasons and you're like, but I used to always do this. I used to always spend time on this. This used to be my priority. And, and I, I always love to do this. It's okay. If that changes, it is. you have permission to change your mind, change your plans, 
change your priorities, you should. And, yeah. and what I, what I see a lot in people that I work with, Ken, and I've been gu- guilty of this myself, but our season changes and we don't change with it. We don't adapt to it. We don't acknowledge the new season that we're in. So, so, uh, you know, I think back to when I had Carter, my, my oldest child, when he was a newborn, I still expected that I would do all the things I used to do before kids. Yeah. And then I couldn't, I was exhausted. The house was a mess. If I got a, a shower once a week, it was a, so I felt like a failure, right? Yeah. Because my new season was not like what I expected. And so if, if you're in that place right now and let's say you've decided to start your debt-free journey, you're working the baby steps. You used to do all these things or spend money on these things or go out with friends out to dinner, go on date night, go on vacation. You're not doing them. It doesn't mean you'll never get to do that again. No. That's, yeah. that's actually why we teach what we teach is so that you can do that debt free. Yeah. But you have permission to change your priorities when you're in a new season. Yeah. You just, you just really made me start to think, I think that's such a good word. And I'm, I'm looking at my own life and seasons that I look back and instead of with regret, I need to look back and reminisce. Mm. Well, you know what we do? You we know, look there at the are times where, hey, Stacy and I eventually will be empty nesters again. Yep. But there was a time where we did things. You know, you, one of my favorite Christy Wright stories is you being single and deciding to go live on a farm and have all the animals. The fainting goat is the yep. all time legendary story. <laughs> uh, we'll say that for another time because it really is fantastic. And you could look back on that and go, well, I, I don't have all the freedom I used to. Instead of regretting that, reminiscing, oh, that was a wonderful season. You learned so much about yourself that make you the wife and mom you are today. We, we need to look back with fond reminiscing, not fateful regret. Well, that, and it's interesting too, because sometimes we can have the opposite problem where we look back on our past as if it was so good. Like, oh my gosh, I wish I had the freedom of before. And in our present, we focus on the pain. Oh my gosh, little kids are so hard. There's peanut butter (laughs) on my walls. Focus on the good in both. Focus on the good in your past and in your present. Man, my kids snuggle my neck like I know Uh, they won't when they're your kids' age. You walk in the house today and they squeeze mama's neck. Yes. Focus on the good. Focus on the good in your past, the good in your present, and the good that I know God has for you in your future. That's a good word to end on. I want to thank producer Ben Hill, associate producer Kelly Daniel, and my co-host and good friend Ken Coleman. Fun. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, this is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600 plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com.